Good evening, this is Woodblock Printmaker Dave Bo here on a hot, humid Tokyo evening with another in our printmaking videos. Tonight we're back to investigating more of the Doi Hanga blocks. For those of you who haven't seen earlier episodes in this series, my Moka Hanga workshop has recently obtained access to a stack of printing blocks carved in the pre-war period, and we are trying to bring these back to life one print at a time. We've so far managed to reprint two of the old block sets, and in tonight's video we're going to take an initial look at a third one. When we opened this package of blocks over in the Doi storeroom, they seemed basically usable, so we brought them back here for a test. I thought it might be fun if I set up my camera nearby to look over my shoulder while I myself did the first run through on these blocks, and it was the first impression from this key block that you just watched during the opening sequence. So as you've seen, this is not a typical block set, one block for one print as it were. The image has been carved four times on each piece of wood. That's four up in printing terminology. And the reason for this is obvious. The carving may take nearly four times longer, but once that expense is done, the printing is hugely more productive. It takes the printer a little bit longer to rug pigment over the block and then take the impression, but nowhere near four times as much time perhaps twice as much at most, so the publisher gains a huge advantage. But this advantage only has meaning if the print is expected to sell in very, very, very large quantities. And indeed, a 4-up printing, of course, only works well when the image is very small. The prints that came off these blocks were very, very cheap, almost disposable. I've got a photocopy of a few here, this one and a couple of others. They were produced as junk souvenirs, some of them are even as Christmas cards. Now, when we come across copies of these old prints, they are almost always very poorly made. The whole approach was completely slapdash, wipe on the pigment, slap on the paper, take a quick swipe with the baron, and go, go, go. Look at these examples. There's misregistration all over the place. Now, we here in Mokohanka, we're not interested in making and selling junk like this. So why are we doing this? Well, for me, we have a few things in mind for this test. One. Are the blocks in good enough condition to actually physically make prints? Two, even if they are and we took reasonable care in the printing, would things still register properly? Could we get decent prints from these blocks? And three, the unknown question really, even if this turns out to be the case, would it take us so much time and fiddling around that the resulting prints couldn't be sold profitably? Only one way to find out, we got to get through with this. So I'll back upstairs with me now and let's see how the printing goes right through to the end of the process. This is not my own printing bench, of course. This is in our Saksa workroom. I know if you've seen some of the YouTube videos I made many, many years ago, proof printing some of the Ukiyo-e Heroes prints, they were done back at my own personal workbench in the Ome workroom. I'm a left-hander, and that workbench is set up for me perfectly. This workbench is for a right-hander, so you're gonna see any number of spots in this video where I'm clumsy, I'm reaching across myself to get some pigment from the right-hand side, it just doesn't work properly, so please, please, here's an example, look at this, I'm reaching across my body for this. <laughs> please don't think that this is the normal way we do things. Just uh, This is the only workspace I had available to me here for this. Mixing pigments on a tile like this is of course only practical when you're just making a tiny test run. If this was a production run of X hundred number of prints, of course we mix up properly in a bowl so that there's consistency from print to print. Thank you. 
This is the first of a number of gradations in this print. And as you'll see here in a minute, pigment is applied just to one end of the brush. There it is, the end of my left hand side. And the block was moistened first, so the pigment feathers out into that moisture and gives a gradation effect. For those viewers who aren't familiar with our system, the printing paper is carefully moistened and that's why it's kept inside that plastic bag along with moistened newsprint. And the idea is that we keep the moisture level consistently right from the beginning to the end. But each impression picks up moisture from the block and then loses a bit of moisture around the edge from just into the atmosphere. So it's sometimes quite difficult to keep it at the same level. We have to add a little bit or take a little bit out by putting some dry sheets in between now and then. Another gradation, here's the block being dampened before the brushing starts. Okay, what's going on here might be a tad confusing. This is the same block as the previous impression. And what I did previously was I just put basically a flat tone on it, a light pale blue tone. But actually that one turned out to be a bit of a gradation because the block itself had darker pigment smeared on it in some areas. And you can see now why. The darker area is from a separate gradation of itself to give a depth at the top of the sky. So once that dark pigment is smeared over the block, you really can't go back and get a non-gradation type of impression. 
But it doesn't matter here because the darkness comes up in the same place anyway. Now this one's certainly a bit visually confusing, but uh, rather than me explain it, just if you watch a minute, you'll understand what's going on here. So there we are, we've seen all the way to the end. Now let's have a post-mortem and examine the results. In this little run, I certainly didn't get any beautiful prints that could be sold, and nor did I expect to. This was an exploration of the blocks, and a number of problems became apparent along the way. Some solvable, some perhaps not. Let's take a look at them one by one. All right, first up, the registration marks. Because these blocks are well used, they've been recut and recut any number of times. I don't think though they're actually so bad. I think we can get away with this. This is more difficult. The brown block has expanded and the left and right images have a different level of misregistration. This is even tougher. That block is cracked and that shows up in the printing impressions. Now even if all those problems can be solved, what do we have? A tiny print that might cost more in packaging, preparation time and transaction processing than it would generate in profit. So why bother? Well, the idea is this. A couple of our young staff members came up with this idea. There's no way that we can afford to present and package the prints singly. But if we had some of them in groups like this, it might make sense. So this is something myself and our staff are going to play with. The first step is to see if we can get this first Kiyomizu print up and running. And if we can do that, we'll dig into the Doi Block storehouse for another couple of images that we could possibly team up with this one for distribution. We'll see how it goes. I think that's enough now for tonight. Do we have time for a quick trip outside? I'm not quite sure. In my iMovie database here, I've got some footage that was taken about two weeks ago by one of our staff members, and I think it might be fun for you to have a look at it. Anyway, for now, that's enough for tonight. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Hot summer evening, ladies strolling in Yukata. What could be going on? We get a hint when we look up at the rooftop here and we see people waiting for something. Over at Sensoji Temple itself, there's clearly a festive atmosphere and you can hear it, you can see them all looking up into the sky. But they certainly haven't chosen a very good location. <laughs> Let's move a bit closer. This is Hopidori, the street just around the corner from our workshop. Still not the best place to see this festival. Okay, here we go. From the roof of the Asakusa Mokohankan building, a few minutes of this year's magnificent Sumida Fireworks Festival. See you next time. <laughs>